So which live action Batman is the best? I think if you polled anyone on the street, they would probably say Christian Bale. And while I'm more of a Battinson guy myself, you can't really deny the greatness of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy. Which leads us to today's video. I am going to be taking you through how I made three 11 by 17 Photoshop posters for each film in The Dark Knight trilogy. We're going to be taking a look at two different techniques I use to get each poster done and make them look really cool. I hope. Hey, I doubt it! I truly think this is some of the best work I've ever done on this channel, and I know I say that a lot, but it's for real this time. You're really going to want to wait to the end and see how all three of these work as a set. It's really, really cool. Also, if you stick to the end, there will be a discount code for my brand new print shop. You can get 15% off these posters and any other poster I've made on this channel so far. And finally, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you like what I do here. It really helps the channel. That's enough salesman it out of the way. I promise. Let's open up Photoshop and get started. Batman begins. So first things first, we need an idea. So I was thinking it'd be cool if we did something like this, where we put Batman dead center in each movie specific suit with a big storm behind him and some batarangs in the front and the foreground characters with a fire burning. I also want that batarang in the beginning to be mostly photorealistic and have it get degraded over each poster as like a thematic through line in the movie. And I want each poster to match the actual tone and marketing of each film. So Batman Begins is going to be orange, clearly. So that's a lot. And honestly, right now, staring at this empty canvas, uh, I'm feeling pretty overwhelmed. So where do we even start? Image searching. We need to find pictures of Batman that fit the composition we just made. And it's going to be hard because I want them to have the same lighting at roughly the same angle in three different suits. So this is going to take a really long time. Also, I have to kind of get creative because in the second and third movie, he doesn't change suits. So I haven't fully figured out how I'm going to deal with that yet, but stick around for whatever I end up coming up with. Some of the prompts I put into just a basic Google search are Batman Begins 4K images or a Batman high res model, stuff like that. Before I started recording, I spent like three hours looking for images and I found this beaut. Oh my God, wow. It's a high resolution 3D model created by this digital artist named Alexander Stojanov. I hope I'm saying that right. His 3D work is in Incredible. So shout out to Alexander for the amazing photo. You can find his work linked in the description below. Everything else is coming from IMDB photos. I was actually told by one of you lovely subscribers in the comments of my last video that that's a good photo resource. And I could not have done this project without that comment. So thank you. And if you guys see more tips and tricks that you want to share with me, put them in the comments. I do see them. So now that we've sourced all our photos, we've cut them out, we've placed them on the canvas and we've lit everybody. Don't worry, I will go over that in the next poster. But for right now, our next big step is creating a realistic batarang. For the bat symbol on this poster, I want it to look like a photorealistic batarang from the movie. You know, that bronzish, goldish kind of look and those flimsy ass things that wouldn't do to anybody. Not me. Couldn't hurt me because I'm built different. <laughs> So I found this picture on DeviantArt of the logo for Batman Begins, but it's kind of a low resolution raster image and I really need this to be a crisp, crisp vector image. How do we do that? We're going to open it up in Adobe Illustrator. It won't really take long. We're just going to trace half of this logo with the pen tool. I'm just going super slow here to make sure everything looks curvy and smooth like your mom. Oh, that's right. I said it. That's right. I'll say anything. I'll do anything. <laughs> if we did this right and we used as few anchor points as possible, we should be able to duplicate this half and flip it horizontally. Now we can use the Pathfinder tool up here in the top right to combine our images together to make one big Batman vector logo. So now we just export that out and bring it into Photoshop onto our canvas like this. So I found this free bronze texture from the Adobe stock free library and I think it's going to do nicely. So we're just going to bring it in as a linked file and clip it down to our bat symbol layer. Now we add a hue and saturation adjustment layer and we go over here and click this cute little colorize button to make sure that it matches the bronze color we see in the movies. So now that we have that photo set, we're going to double click on our shape layer to bring up the layer effects panel. Now we can play around with the bevel and emboss options here. This takes a ton of trial and error, so just 
Give me a second to fine tune this bad boy. There, and that's it. Honestly, all we need to do is combine everything, add a camera raw filter, maybe a gradient map or two just to match the actual orange tone of the marketing, and we are good to wrap this one up. And that's my poster for Batman Begins. I am so, so happy with how this one turned out. I think there's a lot to love about this poster. The colors pop, the characters posing and lighting is not super consistent, but really dramatic and striking. In my humble opinion, it's chef's kiss. <laughs> my humble opinion as I make a video about myself recording my work, critiquing my own work. Anyways. Let me know what you think of this poster in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let's chat. I think it's pretty universally understood that The Dark Knight is a better movie than Batman Begins. Are my posters going to be the same? Let's find out. The Dark Knight. So I've gone ahead and already sourced all of my images using the same process as the previous poster, and I've placed everybody onto the canvas. And that's our cue to start the first, most crucial step in posters like these. Coloring the characters. If you're a fan of my channel, you'll know this one already. It's not that hard. You get it, right? I mean, you get it. Let's start with the blues. We're just going to clip a color balance layer to bats like this. And we're going to tint all three of these sliders, the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows with blue. Next, we're going to clip a hue and saturation layer. And we're going to hit the colorize button right here. And pull all these sliders so he looks like yeah. a smurf. And then fill that layer mask with black. Now you scoot your booch over here to the brush tool and set up a soft brush at like 20% fill and opacity. That's why we have to fill the layer mask with black because we're going to paint in with white a very soft blue glow around his shoulders and the side of his cowl and the ears and such. See, it's already making a huge difference. Now we repeat these steps with the orange layers on the front and you just mask away the back and then you allow some time for those two colors to blend together. Now we need to add a sharp rim light by double clicking on the Batman layer like this and checking the inner shadow box. The rim job is the most important part of this process. Everyone knows that nothing can reach completion without a proper, very intense rim job. What did he say? We actually want to do two rim jobs on Batman. What do you mean by that? One with a super strong white. <laughs> So cringy. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay. What I'm actually trying to say is we're going to have a very intense white thin line around the edge of the character to show the intensity of the storm and then a blue softer glow that's going to kind of bleed into his character. That's why we use inner shadow as well instead of inner glow is because this little guy right here allows us to direct the direction of the direct direction point the direction of the light, which helps us not have to paint in some of those nooks and crannies in his costume later on. It's just saving us some time. Easy peasy. And after all that, after all that, we use an exposure layer clipped on top of him just to help, you know, marry everything together. Rinse and repeat for all the characters, making sure to keep the color and direction of the light source in mind the whole time. So what's left, right? In my previous videos, I would have moved on at this point and just added a camera raw filter and quit. Not this time. We have one step left, painting hair onto the characters. A problem I run into pretty frequently when I cut out characters is they always have this super sharp kind of dome head to them because I'm just cutting them out with the pen tool and ignoring their hair. It was always just a laziness thing for me because hair is really hard to pull. I usually just skip it, but not today, friends. I've devised a way around that with a simple hair paintbrush. Hairbrush. So we first set our brush to this pressure sensitive preset up here in the left and then find your way to the brush tip settings panel and follow the settings I have listed here. This will give the appearance of kind of thin, rough, wispy hair. Now we just jiggle on over to our Joker photo and add a layer on top of him. We want to use the eyedropper tool to pick the color of the hair right around where we will be drawing. And we're pretty lucky this time, actually, because of the intense rim light, it's mostly just white or a bright orange. Now we just paint like this and we go like that. After some trial and error, this is what I got. 
I think it's a subtle detail, but it adds to the professionalism that most certainly would not have been in my previous posters before this. And with that done, I think now this bad boy is ready for the final touches. We're gonna add a gradient map, maybe write in some of the character credits and a camera raw filter for the road. And that is my poster for The Dark Knight. I am so, so happy with this one as well. It's kind of insane that I went two for two. It's very unlike me. I will say I think the Batman Begins poster is just a little bit stronger. It's got that illustrated hand-drawn vibe that this one just doesn't have because of the high intensity of the photo. I also think Batman kind of lost one of his eyes along the way, and that kind of is distracting once you see it. I'm not going to fix it, though. We, we don't have time. We got to move on. If you disagree and think that this poster is actually way better than the other one, let me know down below and head over to my Instagram if you're looking for a closer look. The Dark Knight Rises is pretty universally considered the worst film in the trilogy. Do you think my poster for it's going to be the same? Let's find out. The Dark Knight Rises. So here we are. The third poster in this trilogy, the finale of this series, and Batman's still wearing the same suit. So, what can we do to make things different, but also fit the established look? It's hard enough to find two photos of Batman that fit this established composition. I don't know how I'm gonna find a third that's also different. But, my big boy artist brain had an idea. We're gonna build our own Batman. So, as it happens, the model I pulled for the Dark Knight image also had versions with just Christian Bale's head. The problem is they also took off the cape. We need the cape. We did this like six f***ing times in my Captain America video. Go check that one out if you haven't seen it. We want to line up the eyes and the chin and try and imagine where the top of his head would be if we were putting a mask on top, right? This honestly just takes a lot of fidgeting at a low opacity just to line everything up. Once it's all officially in place, we can start to paint away bits and pieces very slowly and blend the neck area together using a combination of soft and hard brushes on layer masks. Honestly, I found out it kind of works pretty well if we just follow Christian Bale's chiseled jawline with a hard brush like this. A few moments later. Boom. Batman without the cowl. It's kind of thematically relevant, right? I'm I'm not 100% sure. So now what? I really want to make this one different. I don't think anybody wants to see me do the same shit three times in a row, but I, I don't really know what to do. So I went out and did what I usually do, and I just watched the movie. The scene where Bane kicks his ass in the sewer with all the water dripping on him is really striking, and I think that's what the actual marketing pulled from as well. So we're going to do the same thing. Creating a rain overlay. So I have to come clean to you. I did not come up with this technique. I know, I know, you're all absolutely heartbroken that I'm not the original authentic artist you know me to be. What? <laughs> I learned how to do this from a tutorial posted online by this amazing artist named Paul Zeater. The link to his tutorial video and all his other videos is in the description below. Check him out. He's a legit professional. He's a much better follow than me. You're going to learn a lot more and have a lot less dick jokes. I did tweak it a little bit to fit my style and what we need for this poster. But first things first, we need to create a new layer behind all of our characters, but in front of our storm clouds. And it goes right here. Now we go up here to render and click on fibers. We just want to pull the sliders here until it almost looks like tiny rain droplets. The thinner and the smaller the better for the back layer and you'll see in a second why. Now we just set that layer to screen and clip a levels adjustment and a gradient map set to the colors of the tone of the poster to that fibers layer so we can really dial in the colors and the visibility. Now repeat that process two more times, placing both layers in front of our characters now, like this. The closer these two new layers are to our invisible camera we're seeing the poster through will give the illusion of three dimensions. You know, you've got the rain, our characters, and then rain. Like everything else, this is just a trial and error process, playing with the levels and the colors, and it should eventually look like this. And I think it looks pretty good, you know, but it's not enough. We need to make it seem like the water is hitting our characters. So I went online and I found a free water splash brush, which will do nicely. We're gonna create a new layer above Christian Bale and we're gonna set our paintbrush to white. And then we're just gonna start painting all these splashes in very small around the edge of his head. Again, this takes a ton of time and trial and error and masking because you want it to look natural and random. 
it eventually should look like this. Pow. <laughs> Pow. Boom. Pow. Oh, God. <sighs> I think it looks pretty good, pretty natural. Let's just add some sewer water dripping off the bat symbol, maybe a bit on his face, and put it on all the characters, drip it off of... <laughs> Jesus. Phrasing. Dripping off of Bane's face. Phrasing. <laughs> Anyways, I think that looks pretty good. And honestly, after making all of these, I am exhausted i'm sure you are too so let's just camera raw this bad boy and get out of here and that is my poster for the dark knight rises there's a lot to love in this poster as well i am obsessed with this rainfall look and i think the bat symbol here is the best bat symbol of all the three posters sadly this might be the weakest of the three posters the same way that it is in the actual movies the secondary character photos just weren't as good and the fire behind the three characters kind of got washed out in the end but i don't think this is bad by any stretch and in my previous videos there's always one that is just straight up bad either way let me know what you think of these posters down below which poster do you think was the best which poster do you think was the worst what could i have done differently to make them all better sound off i will be down there answering every single comment good or bad maybe not the bad ones <laughs> If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. You can see the discount code here for the print shop. Go in there, treat your nerdy self to some prints. Oh, God. Please leave a like and subscribe if you like what I do here. It really helps YouTube know that it needs to show my videos to more people like you. Thank you for watching. Keep being nerdy. I love you.